celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hello, everybody. It's Alex Bennett. It is the Ramble. And in about a half hour from right now, we'll be joining our citizens panel. But right now, we have something else we want to do. Okay, everybody. You know, whenever we call uh, Stephen Pearl, we call him ahead. You know, we just ring him up because the first thing he ever says is something interesting and fun. So let's see what happens here. Are we ringing? Is he going to pick up? Yeah. Hello, how are you? Uh, Usually I call you and I start recording ahead of time because you always answer the phone with some wonderful thing. Oh, well, you said you were going to call 3 o'clock my time. It's 12 o'clock my time. Oh, uh, I see. It's okay. Ah, you got your math mixed up, old man. Oh, <laughs> oh, all right. I'll call right back, and we'll start all over oh my again. God, I'll come back with something wacky for you. <laughs> okay, now here, here we'll do it again now. <laughs> Take two. Okay, here we go. We're, yes, we're calling Stephen Pearl. Take two. Goddamn longhead keeps playing that folk rock protest songs, rolling up grass cigarettes in the flag. There ought to be a law. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's it. <laughs> anyway, we, we did it in two takes. We did it in two takes. Okay. Take, take, yeah, okay. No, two I, takes, I, 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 guess I, I, I guess I made a you mistake. You guard. Off guard. When I said 3 p.m., I meant my time. Eh, well, you know. Nope. That would have meant, that would have meant. It's okay. It's 3 o'clock your time, which would be 6, 6 o'clock my time. And we I, do it now. Where am I? What do I have to do? He, I did this shit this morning, the, and um, I didn't, didn't know I'd be back in time. I was back right before 11, so we could have done it then, but I didn't know, and now I'm back, so we can yeah. do it now. We can do it then. Hey, God, oh, I can't. Well, we, I got no life. I'm always available. We ruined the myth that this is live, you know? <laughs> well, it's good to be here on the your day here at your time here. Yes, it's good to be here. <laughs> fill in the ties. So fill in the blank. So this is our yes, old we're live. Uh, we're, whatever you want. Whatever you want. Seven second delay. So somebody says, "Motherfucker, we're cunt." You know, it's bleeped out. Oh God, did I say that? Our old anyway. Friend, our old friend Stephen Pearl, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who don't know who he is, you probably never will. Anyway. Most of you do. Most of you don't. <laughs> yeah, most of you, those who do are very lucky people because they've gotten to hear your comedy over the years and enjoy it. So, my well, opinion. I really appreciate the few who are still alive. So I've got to ask you. I've got to ask you as a comedian because this is the first time we've I've, been, I've talked with a comedian on this uh, subject. The Roseanne thing. Oh, my God, you shouldn't know how to said that David Duke lied, Roseanne. Jesus. <laughs> well, my theory is that every time some clueless idiot in the Hollywood says or does something really stupid, an angel gets his wings. <laughs> so Clarence is flying now. <laughs> She's, look, man, what she said was, like, racist and horrible and all that. But if an unknown comic said, like, in a bar to somebody, okay, that was a tasteless joke, blah, 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 it's over. She's famous. Whatever she says is like being a beetle. You know, you don't say you're bigger than Jesus. Uh, you say you're taller than Jesus, but not bigger than Jesus. Well, and uh, she's fucked. It was, it was a, not a good thing to say. Yeah, no. She, it was not a good thing to say. And uh, uh, I think she pretty much, you know, she had a second chance at a career. And it was That's a right. successful chance. Okay? She mm-hmm. had the yep. world by the fucking ass. There's I'm only a short but, jack, yeah. but I think she kind of got away with herself thinking, as long as you make money for these guys, you can come in and shit on their desk if you want to. And yeah. in most cases, that's absolutely true. 
But in this case, I, you know, and it wasn't like it wasn't like ABC were these wonderful people who said we love Negroes, you know. Uh, uh, they they don't give a shit you about. Shit on, they don't give a shit about. You can sit on their desk, but when the shit has the blood of Swerd, Shady, and Goodman in it, you're fired. No, no, but I mean, I don't think that ABC cares anything about the Negro issue, the black issue. Fired. I use the word Negro because I think it's a really funny term. Uh, but I, I always liked that word, Negro. It, it was just, uh, I mean, my favorite line from any movie was like a National Lampoon's uh, Animal House where uh, they go to this bar and there are these <laughs> black guys, and then the guys come back and they say, where are the women? And he says, the Negroes stole our dates. I always <laughs> love that line. <laughs> Uh, I love it too. But, That's what they said back then, because the word "black" back then was an insult. Oh, if like I the if, is now. if I said you black, call someone black in the early sixties. You're right. If I had called somebody black back then, they would have told me, "No, I'm sorry, I'm oh. a Negro." You know. Yeah. Uh, ne- Negro you was been warned, or you might have been hit. But, Negro uh, was the acceptable then. term, and I don't know where it comes from. Probably, it means black in Spanish. You know, that's the closest I can. Oh, Negro, Negro is black and Spanish. Yeah, yeah. So the same, same spelled the same way, everything. But anyway, the point yep. is, the point is that I don't think yep. ABC gives a shit about black people. I think they give a shit about their bottom line, and I think that they yep. didn't want the uh, the just the the uh, problems that would come if they had left that show on the air. They they, they, yep. they they're losing about sixty million dollars by taking it off next year. Yep. But, but yep. they would have probably lost more than that if they'd kept it on. And that was the only thing they were thinking of. They don't care that it was unacceptable. They, they probably don't even understand totally why it was unacceptable. It was unacceptable <laughs> because it was going to cost them money. And if they had kept yep. the show on yep. the air, money, it, money, money. and if they kept the show on the air next year, it wouldn't have made that $60 million it was going to make. Because their sponsors that just wouldn't want to touch it with a ten foot pole, so you know, uh, yeah, that's they, true. They were playing it safe, so I don't think anything yeah. great about ABC and how wonderful they are as people. And, oh God, they, no! You we, know, we care about the Negroes, ABC. Yeah, because first of all, they hired a woman who fucking took a picture with a Hitler mustache on her, taking cookies, people cookies, out of an oven. Burnt, oh, yeah, cookies. burnt Jew cookies. Yeah, right. burnt Jew cookies. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, and I, I, I've known Roseanne, I think you may have even met her when she did the show. On I've it. met her several times. Yeah. Um, uh, back in the day, uh, you know, I don't think uh, she would have ever thought of doing something like that because I believe she's Jewish. She is. Yeah. That's what they tell me. And from Utah, Jewish and growing up in a Mormon town. Look out. Yeah. Something's uh, going to happen. And spent a lot of time in mental institutions that her parents put her in. Things like that. It was a horrible, yep. a horrible upbringing. But uh, uh, no, we don't have time right now to feel sorry for Roseanne. So here she oh. is. She, she's nothing. You know, she did the TV show. It was a big success. As soon as John Goodman, oh. they killed off that character, died, the ratings dumped. The show was canceled. Yeah. She went and did a talk show for, I think, two seasons, okay, uh, uh, yeah, during day, daytime. Yeah, and that was it. She, you know. Yeah, I remember. That was, yeah. her, that was her career. And yeah. uh, rather than go softly into that dark night with all the money you made from those things, she couldn't keep her fucking mouth shut. So, uh, you That's know, right. she's <laughs> tweeting <laughs> this and tweeting that. Oh, the big mouth. And opening up macadamia farms in Hawaii, I have no idea what that's about. Uh, I think there are quite enough macadamia nuts in this world. She's one of them. If Jim uh, neighbors can do it, I can do it, too. Yeah. So here, here she suddenly gets this comeback, which I couldn't believe ABC gave her. You know, knowing her history, you would look at it and say, uh-huh. we really don't want to do business with her because she's too much of a loose cannon. All right? That's right. And yet but, they yeah. and yet they did, and so they am did. I. Am I supposed to laud ABC for what they did uh, yesterday? No, absolutely not, no. because they no. hired her in the fucking first place, knowing exactly who and what she was. That's right. What do they expect? What do they expect when they signed her? When they signed her to do that? When they 
tired of this thing, the national anthem. They got mad when she sang it crazy. What did they expect was going to happen? You didn't hire Beverly Sills. What the fuck did they think was going to happen? So you know about her. You know what she's about. So, you know, you hire her, you just got to expect something to explode. It's like when you hire a comedian to be the host of the correspondence dinner, and then he makes some jokes about yeah. the president, and they say, boy, he was in bad taste last night. What the fuck did you expect? Exactly. You know? Still so, waiting on Dennis Lewis' reply. i got to wait till my writers get back from vacation, babe. It, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I mean, uh, uh, comedians, when they do something that is wrong, uh, you got to kind of give them a little leverage on that because their job is to try and look for the joke, and sometimes they find it in the wrong place. Does that make yeah. sense? You know? It makes some sense, but, uh, yeah, you know. You know well, they did to Kathy Griffin after she held up that head. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't think – I hate Kathy Griffin. I think she's a real cunt. I, I don't like her either. But, I don't like her either. But, and, I, and, I, and I know of her personally. I know of things she's done to people I like, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh but you know, on top, in spite of that, I felt sorry for Kathy Griffin. I didn't think that what she did was anything else but an art piece, you know. Yeah. And yeah. and it practically ran her out of the business. I mean, what is it we do to people these days? You know, somebody accuses yeah. somebody of touching somebody when maybe they did or didn't. We don't know. But as soon as it's yeah. it's stated, oh, it's they no longer are working. Yeah. I mean, this Lower. is this is the McCarthy era all over again, and oh man, just too much on the other side. What I, if I were the head of ABC, I would have called Roseanne into my office and I would have said, "What you did last night was unconscionable, and we want you to make a wholehearted, deep-throated reply to this thing, doing a mea culpa." And I'm so sorry, I didn't mean. What I said, I you know, I was drunk. I was, uh, whatever the excuse is you want to give, but that I take full responsibility for what I said, and I'm so sorry that I did it, and then get on with business. But they didn't give her that yeah. opportunity. You that know? was second chance. Right, and a lot of people yeah. say, well, she did apologize. She took it down moments later, and then apologized yeah. for it. Uh, yeah. But then later on, another tweet, she was doubling down. I mean. But but the fact <laughs> is, this woman had the world by the fucking ass. Her career had been reclaimed. Yep. She was the queen of ABC again. And she mm -hmm. fucked it up. Yep, and for 250 people, that people whose jobs were lost. Well, that's the From part. What I read. That's what I feel sorry about. Other people who lost yeah, their jobs yeah. as a result of this. And it's nothing yep. they did, you know. It was her, her yep. not thinking about them. Yep, they were just aboard the SS Roseanne when it hit an iceberg. Yeah, <laughs> just going down to. So if I were ABC, I'd start and I'd keep the show on the air. Call, call up the Connors, have her dead in the first episode, and let John Goodman be the star. <laughs> It'll be a hit, you know. There you go. You hire someone else to be. He meets another woman, you know. <laughs> he meets this Roseanne's all over the place. Call Central Casting. He meets another her. woman, Kathy Griffin, and. <laughs> 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 No! Anyone but her. Anyone but her. <laughs> no! Summon up the Antichrist from the bowels of hell before her. Oh, oh. <laughs> we haven't seen uh, we haven't seen hiding her hair of Louis C.K. You know, he's been well. He's probably going on to jerk off rehab or something. Uh, I'm just wondering if 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 he he will be able to stage a comeback. I I suspect he will. I think he was like the Pee Wee Herman thing who kind of came back. But, uh, you know, I guess jerking off. Well, you shouldn't jerk off in front of your fans, but Pee Wee was doing well, it in the these, theater. <laughs> no, these, <laughs> were, these were uh, three women who were comedians. And it happened, oh, it, ha and it happened, a, lo it, it happened a long time ago. And on top uh, of everything else, he asked them before if he, they minded if he pulled out his dick and started jerking off. And none of them said no. <laughs> none of them said no. So he went and did oh, it. God. Now, I got to give him credit. He asked permission. He asked. He asked. <laughs> he asked okay, permission. He asked permission. They didn't say anything. And the yet, ball was in their court. And yet now he'll never. The ball came out. Yeah, he'll never work again. And I mean, and none of the women I left know. the room. None of the women left the room while he was doing it. 
So if you're so upset by it, and you're years later, oh my God, he jerked off in front of me, then why the fuck didn't you turn around and leave? Especially when he first said, do you mind if I whip my dick out? Because it's a story to tell the grandchildren. You know, now I, I saw Louis C.K. saying himself. Really, Grandma? Yeah. Now, I mean, I understand Cosby, and they found him guilty. You know, I, I, I understand yep. that situation. Um, um, you know, um, who else? Of course, Harvey Weinstein, who's the poster child for this whole fucking thing. Although he denies, yeah, yeah, yeah. he denies that you know any of it was non-consensual. Yeah. Now, my f- thought to you is, if you. F- are forced to fuck, or in a position where you have to fuck Harvey Weinstein, isn't that just abuse in and of itself? I mean, <laughs> pretty nasty. I mean, can any of you imagine sucking that dick? No, not I, not I. No, absolutely not. Find it. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> but I look like a little piggy cow I, I, I think he's going to skate. I think he's going to skate. By the way. I think the defense they're going to mount is that, yes, there were a lot of women who he used his power to have sex with, but they willingly uh-huh. had sex with him in order to get the job. Uh-huh. Now, maybe you find that immoral and terrible and horrible, and I think that makes him a real low life and, and using the power he has, but but they're going to, they're going to suggest that they did it voluntarily. And I bet, I bet he skates. Uh-huh. Some good lawyering. Okay. Will... I don't know because they might want to make this regular example out of it. Well, I'm moral now and blah, blah, blah. So let's, let's put him in jail and let the others do it. Well, so the, one thing that, the one thing that his 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 lawyers don't want is a jury to a trial. Well, because if it comes to a jury trial, because of the whole Me Too movement and all of that, he hasn't got a chance. Oh, yeah. and, and the pre-publicity uh-huh. on the trial... Uh, he, you know, I don't think Harvey Weinstein can get a fair trial. Um, I mean, would you agree with that? I mean, that he is, it's, no. so, it's so yeah. well known all over the country, and he has been, been portrayed as such an ogre that you could not find. Uh-huh. If you find. Oh, I mean, yeah. If, you have a, you, if you're impaneling a jury and you say, uh, Have you heard about this case? And oh, they yeah. go, Yes. Well, we don't want them as a juror. Now, if somebody says, no, I haven't heard about this case, do you want somebody that stupid on a jury? <laughs> or just someone, you know, somebody who lives in one of the Northwest Territories in Canada. We don't get that news up there. Yeah, we just, you know, uh, just uh, have uh, live in a rural area. Well, no, it's going to be like, a, it's going to be a jury of, uh, of, of Eskimos. And yeah, uh, <laughs> people who live in the deepest, well, darkest like jungle. Let them go, we'll just eat them. Yeah, some kind of, uh, you know, uh, but it, it, I, I just don't know of a jury you could impanel that hasn't heard about this and doesn't have a preconceived notion about it. Hell, yeah. I mean, you yeah. put me on the jury, and I consider myself a very objective person, and I will listen to the evidence, yeah. but knowing all that I know, I will then find him guilty. I'm sorry. You yeah. Know? Uh-huh. I mean, this, this yeah. guy was a was an evil, horrible person. Yep. Is, oh, Lord, if only he could get Roy Cohen. Yeah. He could skate. So, other I mean, than that, he's in big trouble. So, I mean, I think com- comedy's in trouble right now, I think, because of all of this, don't you? Comedy? Comedy's been in trouble for a long time. Yeah. And you want to see something scary, I saw this on Facebook. Go to YouTube and uh, type in uh, college comedy bookers, and you'll see, like, these people. Oh, man, it's, it's how... We don't want to book anyone who's, uh, you know, edgy or makes, you know, people uncomfortable or anything like that, which is what old-time college gigs used to be, real edgy, crazy stuff, you know? Yeah. It's just, oh, these kids, well, this is my safe space, and I just don't want to be hurting when I'm watching a comedian. You know, and they show some kid leaping about on stage, some internet sensation, a YouTube guy, who is horrible. And this is, and the kids, yeah, this is what we want. This is safe. It's like the other cafe squared, man. Oh, and this is what they wanted. The bookers were just like, and if and if a comedian just talks about something, you know, that makes anyone uncomfortable, we just don't pay them. We're having them back. You go, oh, you motherfuckers! One goth girl and uh, one uh, butchy looking girl and one uh, guy. Uh, just, you, know, very yeah, I, 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 you know who? Won't, ah, you know who? Won't, won't, you know who won't work colleges? Seinfeld. I, and he's as safe as milk. <laughs> no, but he will not play. He will not play colleges because he says 
They're just too judgmental about your comedy. I mean, and this oh, is no, this, this is the guy with the cleanest that. act in the fucking world. You know, he's never uh, worked, I, except on TV when he had a series. He's never worked dirty. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. that that show was dirty. You know, uh, but he yep. he never works dirty even to this day. And I point him out yeah, as as, yeah. A, as you can do comedy and be funny, very funny, uh-huh. without being dirty. You know. Yep. I always yep. thought you using fuck as a punchline is a cheap shot. You know. Oh yeah, you can use it to accent something on the way to the punchline, but uh, don't use it as that. Then that says fuck. Thank you. Good night. No, it's not gonna work. Yeah. Uh, it, Here we go. The fucking thing. Ba da ba da. Ba. Punchline. Uh, that will work. Yeah. Uh, I can think of several comics who who do that and are very well known and popular. I think Chris Rock works that way, you know. Uh, but I mean, so I, I uh, um, you know, I mean, I just don't think it's it's a good time for comedy. And as you say, college is what they they're saying we want people who aren't oh, controversial. God, no. Come on. I know, and the, the, the people who get like fired or make these people cry today. The people used to. I used to play college and we played like Berkeley and shit in the early 80s and had a great time. It was amazing. Now it's just a different animal. Those were the audiences you looked later. Those were the audiences you used to look forward to playing to. Oh, yeah. You go crazy and do shit. You know, you know we used to play college with Robert Klein and Carlin and all these people. They played now. These kids would have nervous breakdowns. You, you know, I, I, was yeah. I was mentioning this last night on the program. There's this comedian, Michelle Wolf. She's now known for having done the correspondence dinner this year yeah. and, and and putting down that hag who's the press secretary, <laughs> uh, Sarah yeah, Huckabee Sanders. Uh, and uh, I, she has a show on, uh, sh- on uh, Netflix, uh, a weekly Ooh. show. So I figured, eh, I'll give it a watch. You know, I mean, she caused some noise at the correspondence dinner i'll i'll check yeah. her out she's terrible oh she's no good she's she she, 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 one moment. she sucks so badly <laughs> and then last night i turned on i was w- watching uh, with seth myers and uh he had her on and she wasn't funny uh-huh. i mean uh, i don't uh, you know what i said is you know what is she she funny no she's got a good agent you know, that's because that, she's, she that, just, I she's I not, make your, I'm, don't, don't know her. I guess I'm just an old fart, but I don't get her. I don't see her as funny, you know, and. I really liked her at that dinner, but that's the only time I've seen her in there. At what dinner? At the correspondence? I don't know what she does. Yeah. But I just didn't. I don't know what she does. I don't know what she lives on. I have no idea. Yeah. And she's got the world's most annoying voice, too. So, you know. <laughs> it I, is kind of creepy. I don't understand Amy Schumer. You know? Oh, I don't get that shit at all, man. I, I just, I've seen a couple of clips. Oh, okay, she's got oh, great well, management. Well, they Alex, her. God knows why. And there you have it. Alex, what it is is you don't like female comics. I adore Sarah Silverman. I think Silverman I love Sarah Silverman. is I love Sarah edgy Silverman. and I love funny and probably wouldn't be allowed to work at college. You know? I mean. Yeah. Oh, God, no. Oh, God, no. They have heart attacks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, there are a lot of female comics that I, you know, that I really uh-huh. like. Uh, but, uh, but, geez, I mean, some of these people, they, as I say, I don't even know who these people are. I'm sorry. And I used to be in this business. I used to know every comic. Uh, yeah. any, you know, and uh, it's just. Uh, Life is unfair and yeah. show business is more unfair. And we must deal with it. So would you say that uh, Roseanne got what she deserved? Yes. Yes. I've met her and I've had pleasanter experiences. Like you, getting a hernia operation and uh, got colonoscopy and stuff like when that. When did you meet her? When did you meet her? I met her several times at the comedy store. Yeah. And uh, one time I was coming into a lot. She was coming out a lot. We always ran into each other. The other time uh, she was coming out a lot. I was going into a lot or the other way around. And <laughs> we always ran into each other. And she gave me a finger. And uh, then uh, I went to a couple of tables of the show and just said hello. And that's got a, was she- a, you know, not a nice vibe, you know. Really? Because I, I because I got to know her during the comedy competition when she didn't have a penny to her name and was sleeping on the floor. That of the... Was, yeah, that's before. That was before. Yeah, yeah. So and and, her and, and, and I took her out to bre- I took her out to breakfast every morning. And uh, years, oh. years later, when Roseanne was a big hit, 
She called me. She said, Tom and I are coming to San Francisco. I want to do your show to thank you for what you did for me. Uh, and I, so nice. my experience with her was always lovely and nice until the one time I called her and said, uh, her people, and said, I'd like to have her on the show. <laughs> and they got back to me and said, she doesn't know who you are. So I, you know, there you go. <laughs> I, I went, well, that's Hello. stardom. That's <laughs> stardom. Oh, boy. All right, for Hollywood. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, oh, God. Well, that's uh, you know, that, that's our whole diatribe on comedy and the problems of being a comic today, and uh, and people like you should be working all the time. So that's all I. Can I say. should have my own damn talk show, and you know, what, you know, what are you going to do? Hey, we've run out of time, my fa- friend, my oh, folks, my, my God. friend. Time flies when you're saying verbs and nouns. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely, the attractive, he's adorable. Uh, <laughs> no, he's not. Uh, the simple Stephen Pearl. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hi, everybody. This is Alex Bennett, and I've had a long and interesting trip. It's called Life. And for years, people have demanded that I write a book about it, and while I've been a writer, my main talent has always been that of a broadcaster. Over a year ago, I decided not to write the book. But using my best skill, I decided to tell it. It's called Life in the Passing Lane, and I described it as an audio biography. It's presented in 30-minute chapters, so it's easy to binge listen. And you can access it on the GabNet page by clicking on Life in the Passing Lane and going to a page with every single episode, plus some extras. If you want to access it on your mobile device, that's easy too. It's on iTunes. It's Life in the Passing Lane, an autobiography by me. I'm Alex Bennett. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gavin, the Great American Broadcast Network. Ah, yes. Hello, everybody. How are you? Just ran a spot there because I had some other stuff I had to do, like I had to run and get my tea because I didn't have my tea. Because everything's being fucked up tonight. But Damien didn't have a show tonight because his internet is out. And now I can't use my, uh, I can't connect to the server for uh, where we keep all our files and everything. And it's uh, apparently something down with GoDaddy, I would imagine. Uh, heaven help us. I don't know. I may cut the show short tonight. Uh, why? Because I, you know, I have so many problems, i got to take care of them. You know, so anyway, uh, let me uh, let me see here. Where do we go? Uh, uh, we got to go to our uh, phones, see if anybody's going to call. If people call, we'll talk to them. We'll let them talk for a little bit. Uh, it's just that, you know, when things go wrong technically, then I, I become nothing but obsessed by the problem. And uh, I shouldn't. I should just say, oh, fuck it. You know, things will resolve themselves eventually. But I just, it just, it, it then bothers me for the rest of the show, and I'm not that, I, I'm not one of those, the show must go on assholes, okay? Because uh, the show doesn't have to go on. The only reason I have the show go on, uh, here comes Phil, the only reason I have the show go on is because I live by that, that, that whole old uh, saying, and some asshole, I think, fucking came up with it years ago, and uh, we all then live and die by it. Hello, Phil. How are you this evening? Hey. So Wait, the light was on. Well, let me see here. Why aren't you? Uh, why aren't you louder? Uh, talk to me. All right. Yes. Uh, you, you, you're kind of a little tinny. Slapback. Huh? Uh, are you getting slapped back? No, you, you were sounding tinny there for a while. Oh, that's because I'm a tin horn. Now you're not. Now you don't sound as tinny. Uh So uh, you claim uh, in this. Uh, first half hour that you know a little bit about comedy yeah a little bit all right so uh yeah what's the story uh you don't you know you don't like the uh, comedians that are coming up today i am i i'm not you know i'm not that fond of them no i mean i see you see some occasionally i can't name one right now that i like and i think is funny you know but i don't think that the comedians who are what i call the corporate comedians 
like uh, Amy Schumer. I mean, I don't know what's funny about Amy Schumer. You know, I've never seen her act. I, I, I and and I, I, you know, I love Sarah Silverman. I think she's terrific, as I said in the in the interview there. Um, but a lot of the newer comics, when I watch them, I go, you know, it, there's nothing there that really grabs me, and I can't. I, I don't. I maybe it's just I'm too old for their hip, edgy comedy, which really none of the comedy is edgy because it's like Pearl said. If you try to get uh, into, you know, with a college booker, they tell you only work clean, only do this, don't upset people, we don't need problems, blah blah blah. You know, it's. You know the the kids that came up in in my generation because I would say that uh, many of them were the comics that you knew. Yeah. Uh, 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 they they grew up in a time where uh, where you could be self deprecating. You could. Uh, uh, they came out of New York. They came out of Brooklyn. They came out of the Bronx. They they had different experiences. They 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 went out in the afternoon and. Their parents didn't have to watch them. They they didn't even have to lock the doors to their homes. But they and they got picked on. They were fat kids. They were the they they were the odd kids. And they became the comedians that we've grown to love. Yeah. And these new millennials, you know, what are they? What kind of experience have, have they had in well, their you, lives you were, you were, that we it, can relate to? When you start getting into that, you're you're sounding like an old person. You but know, I am an old person. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's, I think that the biggest problem with comedy today is that uh, there is not really very many places for people to learn their craft. There used to be a place where you could go and make all the mistakes you need to make before. So, so what, are you, what are you going to come up with? You're going you're gonna to be an Amy Schumer, and you're going to not be that edgy or that different uh, and you really haven't had a place to learn your craft. You're kind of thrown into the pool. And, and you know, some agent comes along and says, I think I can promote you. And th 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 then it's all agentry. You know, it's all PR. Uh, and, uh, you know, so, I, I mean, I don't know where the new comics are coming up from. I don't know if I were a comic today where I would start. If you ask yourself, uh, I don't know a lot about Amy Schumer. Yeah. I don't even like Amy Schumer, and I certainly don't like her uncle. But... Uh, if you ask yourself, who, who is her audience? Is her audience uh, late night television? Is her audience the movie audience? You know, maybe she's playing. Well, no, but, but you see, what I what I think she is. See, I mean, and this is, no, but, no, but this is what happens. We live in an age of PR. For instance, in the old days. You went around, you played the clubs, you got a rep, you got places, and 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 uh, the trouble was that most comedians, believe it or not, and even to this day, really wanted to quit the clubs and just get a TV series. You know, hello to Ray Renati this evening. Hey, Ray. Hello. Uh, they 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 wanted a you know they the, the, more than anything else they wanted to be have a series. They wanted to be Robin Williams. They no, they didn't want to be Robin Williams. Men. They wanted to be able to get themselves a sitcom and yeah. not have to go play the, the clubs. And, and a lot of guys, believe it or not, a lot of guys in those early days went out and actually bought their acts so, and, and got up on stage and did them so they get seen by a producer somewhere, get on a sitcom, and that was it. They didn't have to go back to doing the, the punching out the clubs every night. You know, yeah. there were very few people that actually loved comedy and doing comedy. And a good example of that is, is Jerry Seinfeld, who's, you know, as soon as he was through with the series, he never wanted to go back to doing a series ever again. Yeah, he's doing well. He did. He he did a couple of series. No, no, he didn't do One series. Married no. Things. What? Somebody married. No, no. He produced series. Uh, no, he he was the uh, interviewer I, no, on this. No, he, no, uh, he wasn't. No, no, no. I know the show you're talking about. It was a terrible show. Oh and yeah, it, and it was a show that he produced and uh, came up with and was a guest on. He wasn't a uh, uh, the, the uh, performer. The performer was a friend of his. I can't remember his name now. What about the comedy in cars thing? The comedy in cars thing isn't isn't uh, isn't a sitcom. It's yeah. it's a very I think inventive idea for a series in which he's just sitting there riffing with comics, 
and yeah. uh, and and uh, but, but that's not a series. The fact that it's been sensa- a sensational hit, yeah. uh, probably is even amazing to him. Okay, uh, but it's become a pretty big deal, and and it's a good show, and it's a great idea, and nobody is ever going to compare him to his sitcom. Nobody's going to say, oh, well, it isn't as good as the last thing he did, because it's so different, you can't compare it to that. Yeah. So it was, hey, Ray. Yeah. Oh, by stand-up? the way, hello, Patrick. No, I haven't done stand-up. Well, I, the only thing I've done is that I have a show that I do with music and, and, I, and stand-up. I do jokes in between. So I guess I have. I have an act I do. It lasts about an hour. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I've done it a few times. Oh. But, but um, yeah, I mean, I've been listening. Alex, I listened to you the, during the interview there and, and the rest of it, and I completely agree. I mean... The, the whole the whole thing has completely changed. I, I think Sarah Silverman is just brilliant. Yeah. Um, these new comics, I try to watch their Netflix specials. I can't even get first the, past the. To first begin with, I, I look at who They're horrible. I, I look at all these people that get the Netflix specials, and I never heard of them before in my life. Yeah, I know. You know, well, and it, they're no good. Yeah, they're Pat, no funny. Patrick. I would think Sarah Silverman was good for. Is I tried to picture her naked. I never laughed at anything she did, but I did try to picture her naked. So. See, I would disagree with that. I think she was very funny. She is, was, I and think is very great. funny. I don't think she's as funny now as she was. Yeah. But uh, she was, uh, she was the female who got up and did comedy females weren't supposed to do. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, so I, I, you know, I, I disagree with you, but you know, everybody do his own taste. If you compare uh, the generation of comedians that I grew up on to the generation of comedians that my parents would have grown up on, yeah, but you're, uh, you're, you're the comedian you grew up on was a court jester. <laughs> 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 you know, it was the Henny Youngmans. Uh, well, actually, no, my parents would have been. Well, you know, Henny, Henny Youngman was a terrible comic, but that's why he was loved because he was so yeah. bad. I mean, well, he was terrible. Huh? I mean. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, uh, 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 he was terrible. Uh, or the Borscht Belt or the... No, the uh, Borscht Belt uh, guys. Uh, no, no, the Borscht Belt guys. I went to a thing at the Friars Club once where uh, it was just a bunch of guys getting together and just riffing with each other, and everybody gets up and tells jokes and stuff. Yeah. And these were... Uh, I, I'm trying to remember some of the names, uh, uh, but... But they were they were pure be- Borscht Belt and the best comics I've ever seen in my life. I remember a woman that was a little risque in the early '60s in Miami. She used to say, "If I embarrass you, tell your friends." Bell Barth. Bell Barth. You know, uh, I thought she was terrible. You you did. See, no, I, I didn't think... like in those days. Hi, Chris. How are you this evening? Good. How are you doing? Where are Can you? you where are you tonight? Are you still in Big Bear? Yeah, I still am. Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, uh, yeah, you're so, co- you're talking about comedy, so I thought I'd yeah. call in. Uh, it's funny you should mention Big Bear because earlier I said into my Echo because I wanted to put something on my shopping list. Echo, mm-hmm. uh, 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 put uh, Bear Baby Aspirin right on the list, right. and then I looked at the screen. This was on my spot, and it wrote down Bear baby aspirin Mm -hmm. and i'm thinking you know maybe that bed was too soft i don't know uh but uh so uh, now you're talking about big bear anyway where was i Uh, has chris done any stand-up what chris has he done stand-up do you ever do stand-up chris i I did it about three times and i quit uh yeah it's a scary thing it is well, really oh, man, scary. I, was ter- I could not sleep wasn't... the night before yeah. the first time I did it. It was, it was terrifying. In fact, the first time, I, I, you know, I used to be terrified just to get up on a stage and try and do anything. Uh, mm-hmm. But I learned how to do it, and I became very comfortable with it. But I still would not want to do comedy because there's nothing like dying alone, for Christ's sake. You know, you're sitting up there on that stage, and if – if they're laughing, it's wonderful. It's the greatest thing you can do. Beside, it's better than sex. Okay, it's a bigger orgasm than sex to have an audience laughing, and it's a lot like sex because you like having sex. Because when you make a woman come, you 
you've you've created an emotion in her okay and so you control that emotion and the same thing is true when you're telling jokes to an audience and they're laughing like crazy you know it's the yeah, same yeah. it's the same the same sexual thrill but I, I when I do play when I do I, I'm usually the comic comic person in play and uh, Alex it's like you just said it's like, it's like nothing else when they're laughing yeah, when yeah. you're up there but when they're not it, when they're not well, well oh when they're not it, yeah but when they are and if you've worked hard they will <laughs> there's one piece of uh, safety you have with a play and that yeah. is you fail with a lot of other people okay if you fail Whereas right. with comedy, you fail all alone, and you're alone. standing up there, and they told you you just had twenty five. You have twenty five minutes. Yeah. Get on stage, and you got to stay on stage for that twenty five minutes, even if they're not laughing. Yeah. And I've even seen the best comics have a bad night, you know, where the audience just thought they were shit. Well, we hope for hecklers. Huh? No. We hope for hecklers. <laughs> well, you hope for hecklers. Yeah. Hecklers are an interesting breed, by the way. Why do you think people heckle? I think well, they uh, think they're funny, and uh, nope, that they're wrong, adding something wrong, to the wrong. Uh, no, well, wrong. okay. Well, you asked me. They think they're helping the comic. Yes, yes. They think they're funny, and they think they're no. Helping. They think yeah. they're helping the comic. You know, right? Uh, and I, I've known a lot of comics who said they get off stage, and the guy who was heckling him comes over and says, "You were great tonight." By the way, I hope I helped you. <laughs> you know, that's all they're they also usually very drunk. <clears throat> well, sometimes yes, that is the other reason why it happens. <laughs> yeah. uh, There's one other rule to comedy: never sit in the front row. Never sit in the front row. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, because then you're you're open, you're cannon fodder for the uh, for the comedian. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, Don Rickles used to, you know, ask minorities if it was okay if they would sit in the front row so he could heck you know yeah. do his thing to them <laughs> i'm wondering you know a don rickles couldn't happen today no you know but well, you don't like was, hockey pucks huh you don't like hockey pucks no i mean he just couldn't happen today not not in this politically correct atmosphere i mean yes if Don Rickles were still alive today and doing his act. Everybody would laugh because he's given permission. He's Don Rickles, okay? But if Don Rickles came up today and nobody knew who he was and he was trying to do that, and it would, didn't matter if he picked on a white guy here and a black guy there, an Italian guy there, and whatever, his act would not would he would just he couldn't do it. He wouldn't work. Yeah, he was he was working up to just before he passed, and you know people still were laughing. But like you said, he had permission because he was Don Rickles. Yeah, you know, even uh, you know with comedians that you know they're at, you you expect it. Even if you've heard it several times, you still want it's like playing a record again. You know, I and, I told uh, 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 Slayton said to me once, "Gee, I did the same material tonight I did last night." I said. Hey, listen, you're like a singer. They don't want you to come out and sing the new song. Right. They want you to sing your hits. And so they, they know your act, but they, they're there with somebody going, wait till you hear him say this. He, listen to this thing. It's coming up here now. You know, I mean, there is a, a definite desire for you to do your greatest hits. Uh, first of all, Patrick and then Ray. Yeah. Uh, and it, I mean, I have the vinyl album of... Uh, Bill Cosby himself. Mm -hmm. And I remember listening to that time and again because, like you said, it's the greatest hit. And when something, when he came out with a different act, I, and I was a kid, I didn't give a shit because it was never going to be as funny to me as, you know, that what I knew. So you're right, it is the greatest hit, and that's what you want to hear from everybody. Yeah. 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 But I. Yeah. Uh, I, I think there's a point where where an act can get worn out, and I've seen a couple of comedians do the same act for too long, and I think it hurt them. Um, who who was the guy who was who was who he was of uh, Asian descent, but he was from Mississippi. Mm -hmm. I think he I think he was on your show a couple of times. He was at the comedy competition a bunch of times. And he did the same act for like four years. Uh, and after minute, a while, hold on a second. I got to tell somebody who's calling I'll in. I'll get sick of it. <laughs> Tear Park. T 
10, 10, 3, 1, 9. If you can hear me, I can't. Oh, well, let me see if I can. He can't hear you. I, you got to go. I, to I, oh, I know what I can do. Hold on a second. I got to. I, he want, did he want to be accepted? Add the contacts. Yeah. Okay, I'll add the contacts. And uh, then now, where are you guys? Okay. Um, I no, I guess I can't call him back. Huh? That's uh, strange. List numbers. Uh, well, it, it it you know it. Uh, uh, well, I can't. Uh, I can't. Ah, well, what the hell? I'm not going to spend my whole life doing that. Uh, if you want us to pack a uh, park, tier park, uh, ask to be um, asked to be made a, a friend, okay? Uh, Another contact. Go up there and go to add contacts. And I'm just wondering uh, how do I, how do I, I could call him, and then I could put him on here. Let me see if I can do that. Let me see. If, wait a minute. Oh, well, he no. You are now a contact. We you can try. Let's add him to the group call and see what happens. Um, let's see if he picks up at all. You see, there's this little logo. You can see that. And uh, um, he's not answering. So, oh. huh? Is he? There's, no? there's nope. somebody now. No, he, there we go. Okay. It, 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 who is this? It's Max. Max! Max! You know when you when you when you do something like that, Max, you I don't know who it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you in Germany? I am. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I you you know you can never tell. I can't say, boy, that wall looks German to me. In, <laughs> in the old days, I guess if you were calling me from Germany, it would look like you were living inside a cuckoo clock. You know, but now everything looks the same, right? Yeah. Hey, like that. You can see Berlin from that wall. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, yeah. 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 Let's see here. Oh, you uh, got a piece uh, of the wall? Uh, 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 there we go. There's the Berlin, uh, there's the uh, Brandenburg Gate, right? Yeah. yeah. See, I, I know those things. I've never been there, but I know those things. I went to Germany, also however. I went to Germany, uh, but I didn't. I went to a place called Erling, uh, Erlingen, uh, and it was where um, um, Ed Rommel committed suicide. Uh, and uh, I went to a beer fest, which was the most disgusting thing I've ever gone to in my life, uh, because there were people just like pissing into hats in the bathroom. I mean, it was just terrible. Uh, but I remember walking down the street once, uh, street once, and somebody, Brian, what? Why is your picture all upside down and weird and cattywampus and? It's audio on. Well, it's unfortunate, man, but uh, ah. uh, I'm, I'm just gonna be on here for like because uh, I got I got I'm, I'm parked. I did a few deliveries. I was trying to set the tires out on my car because I got it. Yeah, well, but the, the, your picture is upside. Your picture is right side up and upside down. Well, let me fix that then. Hold no, on. No, it's it's uh, no, it's it's. Well, there, that's okay. That's okay. Right. Yeah, but the sound I, is really. And you're loud. also really your sounds really blurry. Yeah. But that's par for the course because oh, nothing on this show is working tonight technically. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, wait a minute. Are you, you going to go to another headpiece, maybe? Let me see if we can. Can you hear More it? Can you talk to us, Brian. Brian? Yeah. yeah. Wait, no, can't hear you. I don't sound now. Oh, now you sound. Now we can. Now you sound fine. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, uh, I wanted to. I wanted to get this over and done with real quick. Uh, I wrote something on Facebook. I'm sure maybe people like Renee have already read it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm sure you guys are talking about the Roseanne controversy. Yeah, show us your face. Well, yeah, you're, you're a little not in the center. Your face isn't in the center of the picture. There we go. Um, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, anyway, it's more important that you clearly hear the sound of my voice and you see my ugly mug. But uh, nevertheless, uh, I wrote this. Uh, I wrote this idea on how Roseanne should have ended rather than just being abruptly canceled. Yeah. I, I wanted to read. I wanted to read this off to you. I think you might enjoy it. And uh, it starts off where uh, I just say, "This is how I'd send the queen queef of comedy's Connor character off to hell where she belongs." Uh, 
I'd have her character lose her goddamn mind and be sent to a psychiatric ward. But before arriving there, the transport vehicle would sustain a severe crash, killing both the driver and the crazy lady handler. Roseanne, who's in a straitjacket and fastened to a stretcher, would be sent hurtling into a public zoo after hours, where she would then be anally and orally raped by a pack of horny and pissed off male silverback gorillas. Roseanne would then have her life saved by a renegade group of aesthetically pleasing African-American freedom fighters seeking to liberate Wisconsin and the rest of middle America from the white upper class oppression and delusion we all currently enjoy. Roseanne's hope for salvation from the hardened spears of angry male ape cocks and an angry gorilla charge ass fucking never seen since the days of King Kong and Fay Ray would then be dashed when Upon confusing one of the black female fighters' faces with that of her simian assailants in her still deluded state of violated day's despair, the chocolate vixen snaps by pulling out a wicked ass revolver and blowing Roseanne's brains out all over the gorilla display and the all you can eat sushi buffet table. The end. Wow. Any comment, gentlemen? Uh, yes, uh, Max. <laughs> Tell us what you really think. <laughs> well, not only have I told you what you really think, I, what I really think, but uh, you could also film the motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure her ratings would skyrocket. Uh, yeah, I suppose. But what network would you find to do it? Probably Netflix. <laughs> yeah, probably <laughs> Netflix. It could be a Netflix original. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Well. Anyway, thank you for hey, that. I, we I, appreciate I gotta it. go. Sorry, um, I'm not feeling so hot. I'm in the middle of this colonoscopy prep. Thing. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, I, uh, well, I gotta go too. I gotta shut shut off so I can uh, drive away. So that office, so another officer pig fucker doesn't pull me over for uh, having uh, having this thing on display, like uh, unlike before when I was watching YouTube and uh, you know paying attention to the road at the same time, which is fucking possible, believe it or not. Yeah, uh, but, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. Us, okay. If I if I see you again, it'll be about in thirty minutes or so. Okay. That's how long it takes to get there? From okay, here, do so. it. Give uh, us a call. Okay. Okay. Bye. See you bye later. Bye bye. bye. Right. Uh, Ray, you before later. you go, Ray. before you go, uh, have have a have a lot of fun with your colonoscopy. Yeah. The, the, yeah. As, you, have, as you as you as you as you've already found out, the prep is the worst part. Ray, if yeah, this is my third time. So. Oh, that's yeah. that. If you're doing prep, you got to go a lot. <laughs> I, that's what I'm about to go do. And then I have to do an online rehearsal for a show I'm directing. Mm. So I got to get ready and then I got to do that. Okay. But I got to go take a trip, go see a man about a horse first. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay Ray. <laughs> see ya. Bye bye. Go, bye. Go prep. I will. I uh, hope the whole thing just comes out okay. You know. Uh, anyway, we could use a few more callers, I guess. Hello, Max. What do you want? You got your hand up oh, there. It was a, I had a quick joke for that guy. If you went to this doctor, he could have said to this doctor, at least buy me a drink first. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, colonoscopies <laughs> are always a lot of fun. I, you know, I don't know about you. I, I really enjoy them. Uh, so, so much so that I, I hope I have a polyp, so I have to come back in three years. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I did. I had a polyp <laughs> last time. Yeah. I had a polyp last time. Really? Yeah. And I said, well, you know, they say that even if you have a polyp, you really probably don't need a colonoscopy because at my age, you know. And he said, no, we stopped giving them to people at, uh, I think what he said was 27, something like that. And uh, I said, why? They said, because you're probably going to die of something else anyway. And I oh, that's a nice thought. You know, that makes you feel real good. Yeah. Do you Did still you get col kid? you still get colonoscopies, uh, Jeff? I think uh, they last time they gave it to me, they said that uh, we'll see you in six or seven years. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It was I like guess, well, I guess you don't care. Yeah, I yeah. asked Kaiser uh, why they haven't given me a colonoscopy. They, I got a sigmoidoscopy. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, but that only ago. goes a little way up. Yeah, it was way up anyway, but. Uh, they keep sending me this kit, and you, you know, you take the tongue depressor, and uh, you you get a little sample, and yeah, but that's not that's not a hundred percent sure. No, I, I know, but uh, but that's I Kaiser. Said, 
Yeah, or, or, I should, uh, or as I, I say, or as me. Larry Bubbles Brown used to call it, doctor-assisted suicide. Oh, exactly. I said, why don't you give me a colonoscopy? And they said, well, we don't do that until you're 65. And I said, well, I'm going to be 64. Wait a minute, you don't enough. do it until you're 65. Who's to get, what? That's what Idiot. the moron said. Yeah, look at look at Chris. He's going giving the, the nodding sign like I am. The fact yeah, is, they, if you you yeah. should start having colonoscopies the minute you hit fifty. And, That's when they gave me this. But if you've up. had yeah. an incidence of, col, uh, of of polyps or cancer, colon cancer in your family, it should start at forty five. Uh, uh, nobody's. Is lived that what long. you've heard, Chris? I, well, just today, I think they revised it to 45, even if you don't have a history. Oh, they just and, did. Uh, oh. And I, they took me in at 49. My wife and I went in back to back. It was kind of a couple's colonoscopy. We made a romantic thing out of it. <laughs> and, but, but it's like it's getting younger and younger now, you know. So. Yeah, well, um, I mean, uh, it, it's, a not, it's not pleasant from the standpoint of the prep, okay, has nothing to do with them shoving this stuff up your ass. You're out. You don't know about it. Have fun. Okay. Enjoy the drugs. But bef the night before, you got to clean yourself out. But that's about it. And quite frankly, it's one of the one of the things you can do that is will save your life. You know, yeah. it, it's oh, yeah. that accurate. You know. So mm -hmm. um, uh, unless you've got a bad doctor, bad doctors can miss cancerous polyps. Like they don't tur turn a corner where they're supposed to. I had a doctor who used to go all the way into my small intestine. He used to just peek in a little bit there, just make sure there was nothing. But uh, yeah, so it's now they said 45 now, huh? I guess uh, the doctors need more money. Is that it? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think. That's and and it's a precautionary thing, and they're going to save a, a couple lives doing that. At, yeah, and if you, if you get it at, at 45 and they don't mm -hmm. find any polyps, they'll tell you to come back in 10 years. At that and age. People probably eat worse nowadays, so it may, they maybe they should get it earlier. You know. Well, so. we don't know if that's what causes, uh, uh, you know, yeah, colon right. cancer. We have no idea what causes it. I, w I wish we did. Red meat might not help a lot, but we don't know. You're right. Well, I've been on red meat diets all my life because of low carb diets, and that's yeah. never caused a problem for me. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, if I have causes some problems, is going cut the polyps out every couple of years. I don't care. I'm asleep. Yeah. You know, you gave me yeah. that propofol, and I get to feel like I can moonwalk like Michael Jackson. <laughs> you know, so that's good. Uh, how, how's your uh, medical? Uh, see, here we go, folks. It's Alex's uh, waiting room. How, how are you uh, medically now, uh, uh, Patrick? You, sh you should be okay, actually. Yeah, I've got a uh, small on the bottom of my foot that's been healing that I got back uh, right around Valentine's Day. And uh, there was just something stupid happened uh, on the uh, foot plate of the wheelchair. I ended up cutting my foot. Oh, wow. But um, the problem with being a paraplegic is I can't really keep pressure off of it constantly so it takes a long time to heal and you know I, but it, it it's healing so you know yeah. no big deal yeah. other than that everything else is tip top so can't complain I, yeah yeah i i i can't complain either i you know i was telling somebody the other day he said how have you how's your health been and I went, well, you know, I do this thing every night where I have a citizen's panel. One night I was talking to all of them, and each one of them had something wrong. You know, one was having a, 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 a prostate removal, another one's in a wheelchair, another one uh, has <laughs> a mechanical heart, basically. Uh, and uh, uh, we had uh, Kevin on with the, with the foot that might have to go if the heel gets worse. And, uh, and I'm thinking, all I've got is the numb feet. You know, that's about it. You know, I can't think of anything else that's really wrong. And that's probably a sciatic nerve. And my, in fact, my doctor, when I went to him last year, I mentioned, he just pointed to my back, said it's right there. So it's pinching a nerve or something. And, you know, that's you all know, part of getting old. You've, you've had people call up that were blind. You got Brian. And I'm saying to myself, well, blind, crippling, crazy. That's the panel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, who was, who's blind? Uh, uh, blind Bob, blind Bob. Yeah, well, he only called once or twice. 
Yeah, he used to call more often. No, he called. It was a couple of blind uh, guys. Yeah, he, he were a couple of blind guys? No. Yeah. No, blind Bob called semi frequently, like during the second or third year, and then he kind of dropped off because he was having um, some other medical issues. And if I recall, he had a caregiver with him. Yes. So yes. His, his health. I don't know if it was deteriorating or if just the way things are with him that he's unable to call with often. But he did call fairly frequently for a while. And then um, I, the last I remember is the last couple of times where he would hang up early because he'd start falling asleep. Mm -hmm. So The other guy I was thinking about was Charlie. Yeah, the, Charlie. The, I was just uh, thinking about Charlie. He hasn't called lately either. Oh. Charlie. Yeah, he moved. He he's not in Texas anymore. He's in uh, Arizona, I believe. Oh, really? No. Okay. They don't have uh, Skype yep. in Arizona. Um, he got a new lady and a uh, new life, basically, and and is enjoying. But wasn't he married or something? Didn't they have a family? Yeah, but um, he, I guess, split with whoever he was with, and um, he. Has had found new love uh, about a year ago, I think, and wow. now they have a place in Arizona. So, wow, yeah, because he yeah. Had lost some of his toes uh, to diabetes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, wow. uh, yeah, I, I in fact I just heard from him today, uh, wishing me a happy birthday. So, oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, Charles, uh, Charlie, if you're out there, we would love to hear from you again. You you know how to get a hold of us. And does Max and Chris have any ailments uh, to, to round out the uh, the panel? I, I bet Chris is pretty healthy, right, Chris? Um, I just passed a battery of tests, but uh, I have a C6 and C7 there that are deteriorating. Oh, okay, that's the um, back. And that's so I back. do a lot of uh, PT for that, but uh, there's well, always an ailment, and then it there's always something hurts. Well, put your hands on your uh, on your on your computer, and I will heal you. Okay, so yeah. aren't you a uh, ordained minister, uh, Alex? Who me? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He can he can heal. I'm, I'm in the uh, yeah. first, what was it? The first I forget the church first, now. The Satan, I think. No, 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 no. It was <laughs> Anton Levey. No, there was this this guy, this pre preacher who had this church out of Modesto, California, and mm -hmm. uh, it. If you sent him in the old days, if you sent him ten bucks, he would make you a, a minister of his church, and you because you were a minister, you got the the plaque and everything. Uh, you were capable of of uh, have doing marriages and stuff. Mm -hmm. The first what do you call it, church of Modesto, California? I'm trying to remember the name of it now. Is it a free free church or and something? And then I sent in twenty five dollars. They made me a saint. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of magicians get that and they throw it onto their. Uh their services they provide for you you know they they pay the 25 bucks and they'll marry people as part of the show oh really some some of the more enterprising magicians who do six or seven things the the jacks of all trade well, i'm you know, i but, could do that but my problem yeah. is is that my act would be my magic trick would be making marriages go away and disappear mm -hmm. uh, yeah, i've been very i've been you know. very good with that in my lifetime yeah you had lots of practice. Yeah, well, I'm just not as good at it as I used to be. She's still around, you know, so I don't know why, but she still is. Yes, Jeff? I always wondered why Al Sharpton never became a, a minister or how he became a minister. Isn't he a reverend? Yes. Don't yeah, think he says he is. School. He's yeah, a, he's he's a reverend the from the, the same way I am. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, what was the name of that church? I can't even remember the church that I'm a minister in, for Christ's sake. The first Not the certificate? You didn't put it on the wall? The first or some, the storage. Oh, it's it's Amy Universal Amy. Life Church. Huh? Yeah. Universal yeah. Life Church. That was it. The Universal yeah. Life Church in Modesto, California. Yeah, but I'm trying to remember who the guy was. It was the minister. Robert Hensley was his name. And uh, uh, at one point I interviewed him, and so he sent me a thing making me like a saint or something or a bishop. So I was I was even higher up, and and a lot cheaper and easier than Scientology. Let me tell you that right now. Yes, Patrick. I would 
just going to bring up Scientology. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was I was uh, out today, and I had to run a few errands that I didn't plan on doing, and I wanted to one of the streets that I went down. Um, I happened to look up at it, it was a strip mall, mm-hmm. and I happened to look up at the signage that had the four or five or six different businesses that were in this strip mall yeah. at the stoplight. And one of them was a small um, rectangular part of the sign that said Church of Scientology. And I looked over yeah. and it was basically a storefront that couldn't have been more than maybe what you'd have for an H&R block or something like that. And I thought, wow, you know, um, and, a, and about two or three blocks away is a huge mosque. And I thought, well, at least at least that's something to look at. It's a nice mosque. It's a beautiful building. The storefront thing that just Patrick, diminished. How much room do you need for a bunch of L. Ron Hubbard books and one of those little machines that you hold on to? And it tells you whether you're lying or By not. By the way, Tyson Acosta writes on our chat, Alex, how about the sacred teachings of L. Ron Jeremy? Mm. Oh. <laughs> uh, 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 years ago, when I was working in Klamath Falls, Oregon, this guy calls me up, uh, I think it was in Klamath Falls, Oregon. No, it was Houston, Texas. And said, uh, why don't you come over? I'd like you to see what our church is all about. You're, you're a radio guy, and we like to do PR and so on. We'd like you to see her. And it was a church called Scientology. Now, this is in the, what what year would this have had to be? 65? And so Hubbard was alive? So, oh, yeah. Uh, and so I go over there, and uh, they t- he tells me all about it. And then he says, well, let me audit you. And I said, what's that? And he hands me these two. I Literally, they were two tin cans. Right. They were like yeah. the, the Campbell's soup label had been taken off of them, and they had been opened up and cleaned out inside, and you held these tin cans. And, and after he was through, I went, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> oh, but we can make you clear so that you don't have any uh, uh, thetans or whatever in you or what. And I went, no thanks, and I left, you know. But um, I got out before they got me. Yes, yeah. Patrick. That's why I've, I've been, and I know you've seen it too, the Leah uh, Remini. Re- uh, Remini, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's just an outstanding uh, series that, that she'd done. And I had never seen what you said, the two tin cans until that show. And I'm looking at it, and I'm going, who would fall for this shit? And I know there's people out there in the audience saying, well, who would fall for Judaism? Who would fall for Christianity? Exactly. But you know what? We, there's some history behind Islam, Judaism, Christianity that we can trace back, whether or not people believe it or not. They all had to start somewhere, actually. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I understand that, but... I don't remember Moses having like a tin can that you know somebody's gonna hold. You know, it, it just rock and a chisel. <laughs> you know, he had, a, he, had a, he had a staff. Yeah, yeah, he had a staff, and and uh, but I mean, you trace stuff back, and then I guess maybe at that point in history, I might look at it that way. But I don't know. It it it, it did. Strike me as weird, like you said, Campbell soup can with the label taken off, with a string between them that we used as a kid to talk to each other, like like a phone. You know? Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, but I mean, uh, it, 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 it still there are people that believe it, and you say to yourself, and you were quite right when you said it. You know, there are people that followed Christianity, that follow, and what are all these religions when we boil them down? They're just hustles to get money to keep them going. Do you, you know? think that Scientology was formed as a religion to escape uh, income tax? And, I, I, have uh, no that I, really I, I have no idea why L. Ron Hubbard started, started Scientology. I don't know that 
I, you know, I just don't know what was going through his mind. I wish I had met the guy. I never did. Uh, I would like to know what was going through his head. Did he really believe this nonsense that he was creating? Hey, hold on to these tin cans. You, you, as soon as you, the meter doesn't move at all, uh, you're clear. Either that or you become the dullest human being on the planet. I don't know. The, Something the, the like that. The meter was there to see if you, what, reacted somehow to a statement or a word? or well, No, it wasn't even as good as a lie detector. Well, and not not for lying, but, you know, what what's your reaction? Or, you know, do, do things uh, stimulate you negatively or positively? You know, different, different kinds of words. Uh, By the way, I, the guy who invented the lie detector... Yeah. Also created something else. I bet Patrick knows. Right, Patrick? Truth. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the guy who invented the lie detector also created Wonder Woman. <laughs> well, think about it. Think about the it. The golden lasso. Yeah. The golden lasso of truth. Right? right? She puts the, tr the lasso of truth around you, and you, you're forced to tell the truth. I saw uh, that in Meet the Falkers. And he was into, he had a very liberated relationship. He had a, a, a wife and a woman who was, I guess you could call her the other wife, but in those days you couldn't legally have two wives. And they lived together. His name was Professor Marston. There's a great movie about it called Professor Marston and the Wonder Women. It's the story of the life of him. And he, cre he was very much into bondage and things like that. And if you ever went back to the early Wonder Woman comics, she was always, to, not, they said 35% of the time she was tied up, you know, in her bra and whatever, uh, you know. And, and so he, um, he and his, his wives came up with Wonder Woman as a comic book and literally foisted this on the American public courtesy of DC until uh, finally some people got wise as to what the message was. Uh, but he invented the, uh, the lie detector. Um, so uh, interesting life this guy had, very interesting life. Um, so anyway, uh, uh, by the way, uh, we've got... Uh, Max here. I love having Max on because uh, number one, he's he's in Germany, and he's safe from everything. Okay, except the Italians that want to pull out of uh, uh, the EU. Uh, are the Germans talking about that? Not uh, really. It's right now. It's still an internal matter. Matter. Then it becomes an EU matter. Yeah, it, and they're it, saying that more progressives are uh, uh, you know, becoming in, in charge of the Italian government. Yeah. All right. Well, that yeah. would be a difference. Well, well yeah. the progressives are more like Trump supporters. Because, I mean, I, lo I love the days when they held bunga bunga parties. You know, <laughs> you remember Berlusconi? I'll be going to Italy in two weeks. What? I'll be going to Italy in about two weeks. Yeah. is He's, he's running again, isn't he? Ber Berlusconi. Oh, uh, could be. I haven't checked. Yeah. Full of baloney Berlusconi. Hey, you know, this yeah. is for... Uh, Pleasure. Huh. Oh, pleasure. My birthday. Oh, more yeah. birthday boys. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, anyway, so you, how closely do you watch what goes on in America? See, isn't that Nothing, wonderful? Really. Isn't that wonderful? You know. I mean, I, I just found out about Roseanne Barr today. Yeah. So that must have happened in the last day or two, but yeah, that's about it. What was what, what? What did you think when you heard about the Roseanne Barr story? It was bound to happen at some point. Yeah. Okay, think about it from another perspective. When you play with knives so long, one day you don't cut yourself. Yeah, well, I can't. <laughs> I, it, it, when she, when they said we're putting Roseanne back on the air, right? I went, "Man, that's a failed career that just got saved." Well, you know, not even that. Look at remember the, it's the show Two and a Half Men with yeah. Charlie Sheen. Yep. That was destined for disaster. Well, it wasn't as destined for disaster until it went about 10 years and Charlie Sheen got full of himself. He was earning like a million per episode, if I remember correctly. Yeah. But yeah. 
Yeah, but he, in this case, you had Rosanna, who only had nine episodes behind her, and, and uh, was like uh, suddenly thinking she was the greatest thing that ever lived. You know, yeah. if I were Roseanne, you know, I got I, I, I when I worked in San Francisco, I was very popular, made a lot of money. And then one day I got fired. <laughs> and then I wasn't making the money and I was out of work and I didn't have a radio program. And so when they rehired me and I came back, I was a much nicer guy because I, I knew what it was like to have it taken away. Mm -hmm. And then I lost it again, and then I got it again when I went to work at Sirius, and I worked there for about nine years, and for those nine years, I was probably the nicest guy you'd ever want to work with because I was appreciative that somehow I had been pulled back from the abyss. Resurrected. Yeah. I mean, Why Roseanne didn't feel that way is beyond me, you know? Uh she was wealthy enough not to care. She wasn't that wealthy, Phil. Where you do you get the idea she was wealthy? Her series. Hey, that money was blown years ago. Come on. Yeah, you know, you should ask me where's all the money I earned in San Francisco. But you know, <laughs> I, I I had I when you you know, I had lawyers. You know, I had accountants. Uh, I liked spending the money. Okay. And uh, I didn't save any of it. So when I was out of work, uh, I was out of work. So, I mean, you're thinking that Roseanne saved all that money? Nah, not necessarily. How much did her agents get? How much did the lawyers get? Yes, Max. Between KML and Live 105, did you save a little bit of money or no? Yeah, I did. But then when I was out of work, I went through it pretty fast. You know, oh, okay. KML, even though in those years you were doing all right, it wasn't a lot of money. I think, me, what did you start there? Thirty-five thousand. So, uh, Still I think a something, lot. something like that. Yeah, and, and then, then they raised you but, to seventy. But no, but they raised me to like seventy-five. Yeah, when I said I was going to leave, and then uh, I got hired by the Quake, right. and they offered mm -hmm. me to come over there, one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars a year. So I quit uh, KML and I went over there and that place failed, but I had a three year no cut contract. And so they had to keep paying me and they didn't want me to work for them because their ideas for a format were completely different because in my contract it said that I had uh, complete creative control over my program and they didn't want me to do what I wanted to do. And if they weren't gonna let me do what I wanted to do, then I didn't have to go to work and they still had to pay me. One thing led to another. I finally wound up making between all things uh, about I don't know four or five hundred thousand dollars a year in San Francisco, and but a lot of that money, you know, every time uh, there'd be a legal problem or a legal action or whatever, you know, uh, yeah. in order to keep the Quake job, it cost me twenty thousand dollars for a big hotshot lawyer outside of L.A., you know, to have those checks keep coming. So, you know, when you, when you talk about all of this, about how much money Roseanne made, anybody who makes m money in Hollywood, take away 50% immediately for things like lawyers, agents. Uh, and then remember, you're also in business with two other entities, uh, yeah, the United gosh. States and the state of California. Right. So once you do away with that, you know, how much gets left over? Not a lot. Not a lot. Uh, and in the case of Roseanne, I think she probably blew it years ago and was surviving on macadamia nuts. And, and, you know, when they gave her the show, I was fucking surprised. I mean, I went, I mean, we probably all were. What? The resurrecting Roseanne? What for? It was a very good idea on paper, you know. But the wild card was her. And the thing that's worst about her and that makes me feel, and I, used, I was friends with Roseanne, I knew Roseanne, and I used to like her very much. But the thing now that has made me absolutely hate her was not for one moment did she think of how this was going to impact 250 people who worked for her doing that mm -hmm. show. Who, are, who, who, because the show was a success, a lot of them went out and bought houses. Right. You know, they went out and, and uh, bought a new car or they uh, decided to send their kid to a better college because, hey, this was going to be a godsend for the next couple of years. 
And now that isn't there, and these people are in big, deep shit, all because of that arrogant, non-caring cunt. Yes, Patrick. I was going to say, before, if she did have any syndication percentage, she killed it with this one little incident. Oh, all the all the all the networks have been carrying her shows and syndication all of them. have dropped them. Yeah, even the older ones. Yeah, so she doesn't get residuals. Yes, uh, Patrick. You know, I'm gonna be, what I, what I'm going to going to bring up is it makes no sense to me why they would cancel the show from 20 years ago because it has zero to do with anything right now, and those residuals are important to the other actors and actresses on that show. They said it was temporary, Patrick. What? They said the cancellation of the old shows was a temporary action. So I, I think it's just... Uh, what, what old shows that were canceled? Uh, her previous... Uh, 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 no, that, oh, show, that, that show was canceled. You know, no, they're taken off... 20 years ago. Yeah. They're, they're not showing reruns. Right, and right. The residual... What I'm saying is the residual from that, from being on rerun is stopping for everybody that was on the show. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, that which too. is ridiculous why they would take the old show off, even if it is temporary. Um, the other thing I did want to bring up... Well, because, because Roseanne is the devil and God will strike them dead if they run her show. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, and, and, boycotts. Yeah. It's a prevention of boycotts. It's stupidity, and I, you're quite right. I think it would be nice if one of those networks was to say, well, we're going to keep running them so people like John Goodman and all the other actors and actresses on the show can get the residuals that they that they would get. But instead, you know, John, John Goodman's income is down a great deal, not because the show's well, been taken off, but because of the residuals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, the other thing I, I wanted to bring up is um, that thing that I sent you this morning? Mm -hmm. uh, CNN uh, uh, trying to explain why you can't cancel the president like you can cancel Roseanne. Uh, if I was if I was a liberal, I would feel insulted that CNN felt that they would have to explain that you can't cancel a president. What I I couldn't even understand why anybody would even write something like that. It wasn't a CNN story on TV. It was a CNN story on their website. And why the president can't be canceled. Uh, excuse me? Yeah. There's one reason. He isn't a TV show. Okay? Uh, I mean... Well, uh, that's only a, a, a wish and a prayer uh, by the liberals that he could be canceled. No, but it, it, was, it was a serious piece uh, that and I found it and I, I thought it might have been a humorous piece and I read it and then I sent it to Alex yeah. with the screen capture of the title and it said why Rodan can be canceled and Trump can't or something like that so that in case it would pull he would see what it actually said and it was an in-depth like an analysis of why the president of the United States cannot be canceled like a TV show? Did you hear That's today? Ridiculous. Did you hear today that uh, Trump is killing uh, uh, terminally ill uh, patients because he's uh, signed into he signed a proclamation or whatever it is that they can uh, use experimental drugs if they're terminally ill, uh, and so I'm just waiting for the the left to say that Trump is killing uh, terminally, terminally ill patients. Why do you think the left is going to say that? Uh, because they'll look for anything no, negative. No, you know, no. I think that what he's doing is great. No, I think because that's fine. Says, I, think it's, I think that's fine. But, yeah. the only, but he's not doing it because he wants to save lives. He want, he's doing it because he wants to make money for the drug mm -hmm. companies. Well, is, you know, if somebody's terminally ill... He's and, not doing uh, it because they, he wants to help these... terminally ill people. He's doing it because he wants to help the drug companies. See, Bill. see, that's that's your left wing bias. No, it isn't my left wing bias. Yes, yeah. Patrick. Oh, Max, Max has his hand up. Oh, oh, okay, Max. This will sound kind of bad then. And if that's the case, why not just use death row uh, inmates? Wouldn't that be easier? They already don't die anyways. Yeah. These are people that are suffering. 
Yeah. What happened to uh, what happened to to Chris? Are you there, Chris? Oh, I, yeah, I have to plug in. I'm I'm losing some battery here. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. here, here comes oh, Kevin. Uh, you know, I I I wish I I wish I could. Uh, you know, I mean, good. I'm glad people get drugs now. Yes, Patrick. Honestly, Phil, I don't think there's an altruistic uh, background to why he did it. And I don't care. I don't care if it is for money because it's going to benefit people who are terminally ill. If, if, if they can get drugs that aren't FDA approved and, and they work on them, great. And if their companies make money... If I were a determinedly ill patient, I wouldn't give a shit. Well, I agree. With, look, I agree with you, Patrick, but there are some questions to be asked. Hello, Kevin. How are you? What is that? An A's? Is, is that an A's cap? Uh, can't be yeah. outdone yeah. here. It's nice. Uh, 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 what, uh, what, what I was going to say was, uh, what were we talking about? Uh, oh, boy. Using drugs on oh, terminally oh, ill oh, patients. On terminally ill patients. That it, I think, is is good that they should at least have the ability to to use an experimental drug, even if it is going to kill them, because they are going to die anyway. However, how do we decide who's well and who 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 qualifies for that? Because you don't want to just give this to people because they, well, I I think this might save my life. Uh, yes, Jeff had his hand up. Yeah, I mean it's very common that. When there's a drug that's starting to, let's say, it, it's 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 looking like it might be useful, then the next thing that they want to do is do a bunch of studies to to actually prove how well it works and for what kind of patients mm -hmm. does it work effectively. Yeah. yeah. And and that's done by the FDA approval until Trump destroys that. But anyway. It's, it's a pretty good scientific st statistics yeah. and, and information that's very, very to give us the right kind of drugs and, the, and yeah. get rid of the ones that, that aren't good. But I'm uh, glad that he signed that. Well, thing. no, but you're glad he signed it. But the question is, there should still be limits on who gets it uh, based upon how ter is someone terminally ill or are they just ill and they might become terminally ill and how pro right. and how <laughs> promiscuous wait a minute how promiscuous are we going to allow the use of this kind of stuff you know i think there are certain questions which should be asked i do agree with you that uh if a person is terminally ill he should be allowed to use any drug he wants to that he thinks can save his life Isn't Inclu the doctor including the including a suicide pill isn't the doctor the one that would determine whether they're terminally ill or not? Well, you know, how do we? Did you trust all doctors? Uh, not necessarily. When, okay. when they're dead, it's pretty Before that, it's un, undefined. Well, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I, I just, uh, I don't think that Donald Trump would do anything that he didn't think had an, he had an ulterior motive for. And in this case, it's to help the drug companies because they want to get that product pushed out to the public. I think maybe it was just the right thing to do. Uh, uh, he had said that he was uh, going to speed how many, drugs. How many here, put your hands up if you think that uh, Donald Trump would ever do anything that was the right thing to do. Well, you're the lone For ranger, himself. Phil. What? <laughs> For himself every time. Yeah. Trying. What? He, he's trying to get his hand up. Uh, uh, yes, Kevin. Did you say something, Kevin? Oh, I said I'm trying to put my hand up, but it just doesn't want to go up. Why? Oh, oh I see. I see. You wanted to put your hand up. But you, yeah. And I had my hand up because I was using it as an example. So please don't <laughs> think that I'm one of the people that thinks that he won't do anything in his own best fucking interest. The force uh, of gravity is, keeps pulling it down. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me see here. What, what's been happening? Anything been happening in the news that's worthy of uh, of note? Uh, well, that, that's 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 pretty much it. I guess Trump didn't do anything stupid today that we can talk about. Plus, He's I'm, I'm less and less stupid stuff. Well, uh, well I, no, 
he's busy with Kim Jong Un and uh, all these other things, and I think he's just doing less stupid stuff. Uh, the stupidest thing that he did today, yeah, was he held a, uh, a an event at the White House on behalf of of of, of fitness. Why? It, well, he he's not exactly the poster child for fitness. No, but neither was John Kennedy. And, and so in, uh, in the light of that story, somebody did some investigations and talked to some people at the White House and said the president has been dieting since January. He wants to lose, he wants to lose uh, 15 to 25 pounds to get him down to a decent weight. Are yeah. you kidding me? Hell, I look thinner than he does when I was 55 pounds heavier. And they yeah. say that he hasn't been able to lose a pound. They've been putting him on a diet, but he hasn't lose, lost weight at all. It's tough when you are playing golf all the time and eating at the clubhouse and you know, French fries. Oh, you know, would be, he probably could lose a lot of weight if he just paid attention to being president. Uh, he probably is. We haven't heard from Melania lately, you know. There, she was there's in the a, well, there's a reason for that. I think there's something wrong. Uh, yeah, do you think the operation went uh, south? I don't know what, but they, they say that she's not talking about it. I, uh, I heard that she she sent out a tweet today saying that she would find and, and working on children reading or whatever the hell her thing is and that was it and um, so she did put out a, a, a tweet or a statement uh, today so she may be alive I'm so sick of these Where's first on that? I'm so sick of these first ladies who always choose as their uh, cause things like children's literacy well that's a controversial Do you thing you rather boy. have a first lady that chooses socialized medicine yes <laughs> yes, well, absolutely. You voted for, huh? You voted for I, uh, Hillary. Uh, yeah, I, uh, 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 but I don't think she would have given us socialized medicine. Well, that's that was her aim when she was first lady. Mm -hmm. uh, she had taken over the, uh, uh, the initiative. That's that's one of the things that was a uh, uh, harmed a great deal. Harmed the initial presidency of Bill Clinton was that whole initiative of trying he tried to do that in his first term if he had tried to do it in his second term he might have actually gotten some some legs on that but to do it as the first thing when you get into office is not a good idea there's a lot of resentment over a first lady uh, doing uh, things like that well that's just sexist no no, no there, there was a lot of resentment I know because that's the, sexist like, that's, by the public, that, that they didn't it think was that a very was, sexist concept. I mean, at the they time, think it was well. Then, then you're sexist in your comment about Melania Trump doing reading uh, instead of. Well, uh, I think I think maybe you know she could, you know, at least at least uh, Michelle was into vegetables, you know. Yeah, yeah, she was. She was married to one. Oh really? How was yeah. he a vegetable? Uh, the, the terrible things that uh, were uh, like what. At, during like, his what? like what? Like what? Like uh, what? Like giving Iran the bomb uh, or a pathway to wait, wait, it? Wait, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. There are two ways of looking at that. Or denuclearizing Iran. That did, it, well, it was kicking the can well, down the road. Well, but the, but, but were they can. denuclearized or weren't they? They were not. Well, they were not. They were still now, building nuclear they, they were still building a nuclear device in yeah. Iran? Absolutely, you, you, because you, what they said was, as soon as America pulled out of the agreement, they said, we're going to start enriching again. Well, well, I, I believe well, well as uh, yeah, but what I'm saying is, is that while every nation was a signatory to that uh, compact, uh, has said that they were living up to their agreement. They were not working on nuclear devices, so and they were not enriching me. uranium. They weren't doing any of that. Yes, but they uh, were launching. Yeah, ICBM. yeah, but what you're saying, what you're saying is, you, you're turning it around. You're going, oh, uh, uh, Obama uh, allowed uh, Iran to have a nuclear bomb, 
that's it's patently untrue. That's I not why he. Packed. That's not why he went along with that pact. Yeah, all it did was kick the can down the road. No, that, 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 you don't know whether it was kicking the can down the road or not because we're not down the road and there's no can. Right. But yeah, we, well, we have certainly put ourselves in bigger jeopardy now by get backing out of that. I and mean, we I only backed out of it because his, his friend with the fuzzy mustache uh, doesn't like it. You know, Bolton. With the big who's mouth. The, yes, uh, yeah, yes, Max. This is all American stuff, which just, I know make it's boring. Well, I, I would think that the Iranian bomb would uh, affect Max as well. Yes. Okay. Well, okay. I'm not sure about the bomb, but before you're talking about Melania, at least. Yeah. If I remember correctly, she actually said in her interview she never wanted to be a first lady. So she took the kid, Broad Banner, or whatever that the kid's name is. Baron. Right. Baron. Barrett, thank you. Yeah, but, and she took him to the penthouse of the New York building and just hid out there, which is probably where she's still hiding out now for the next remaining three and a half years, whatever the time is. No, she's at the White House. She's at the White okay. House now. Oh, really? She moved there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she moved yeah. there quite a while ago. I'm sorry. I'm wrong but we're, there. <laughs> we're still stuck with a bill of $200,000 a week, I think it is, here in Manhattan to keep uh, Trump Tower safe. Why? Why? I don't know. Well, how much do they spend on Hyde Park, uh, to, you know, to keep FDR's residents safe? Or a golf course. Oh, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think in those days we spent very much money on that kind of uh, security. Yeah. You know, the, well, it, 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 you would be amazed at how little security presidents had in those days. Yeah. You know, yes. Is, ask John Kennedy. <laughs> Is, uh, is uh, is the president still going on golf courses every week to his own uh, oh, golf yeah, courses yeah, uh, and yeah. charging rent to the uh, Secret Service? Yeah, it costs us every time he goes down to Mar-a-Lago. It costs us uh, something I think like about a hundred and fifty to two hundred million dollars every time he goes down to Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, yeah. The, he might take a lot of selfies for Instagram. You know? <laughs> They're saying that these uh, vac people are vacationing now based on Instagram, in Instagram feeds, you know, where they can get the best selfie of themselves. And uh, that, that seems to be the, the new vacation uh, push. Have, have you seen that article? No. 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 OK, well, uh, Apparently, yeah, that's yeah, I haven't I haven't I haven't looked at Drudge lately. So, you know, uh, it wasn't Drudge. I don't know. But... I believe it. Though. Yeah. You know, I think people are so shallow that that that's exactly what they would base a vacation on. Right. Yeah. They said, "Is this vacation Instagram?" Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I believe it. Yeah. Actually, for the younger people. Right. Yeah. Well, that's it's just what people are doing because you know they're choosing locations that they can get selfies and uh, and post them. No, it's much. You know, it's much easier to not bring a phone or a camera. And the last day before you go back, go to the nearest post office place and for one or two euros, buy a couple of postcards and you're done. Buy a book, yeah. Well, I, I'm going to Montreal in July. So, uh, the Jazz Festival. Uh, is there a Jazz Festival there? It's, it's June or July. Yeah. Okay. Why are you going to Montreal? And it's pronounced Montreal. Yeah. Uh, it's a, well, a nuclear thing for me, but. Uh, at, yeah, I'm I'm going uh, for a convention, and uh, is it another one of those rug conventions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> those must so, be really exciting. You know, we all wear fezzes. Well, you know what? You know, you know what I should do is I should uh, during that week go up and meet you up there, and I can go to your convention with you. Absolutely. Because the excitement of of being at a convention of people who sell flooring is just really. It's been on my it's been on my bucket list. It's on my bucket you, list. I, I'm, I'm sure. You, uh, can you pour water on those fezzes and it rolls right off? <laughs> yeah. No, I, you know we. Chris, would you like to join us uh, going to Montreal and we can hang out with all these uh, carpet people? I really, I really like that episode of uh, Baskets where Louis Anderson was dating the carpet uh, guy from Colorado. So that's all I know about carpets. Oh, right really? Now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, uh, Patrick and then Max. Yes, Patrick. I, I, I sent a bit of sarcasm in, in your statement there, Alex. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? 
What? Say what? Uh, yes, Max. Question. Where there's three gentlemen in this chat who are wearing Oakland A's hats. Yeah. Three of them. <laughs> Yeah. Is there a plot or some sort of conspiracy? You know, somebody, somewhere in this house, I actually, I think, either have an That's Oakland like A's... I either, sent you. I have an Oakland A's hat. Oh, wait a minute. I know what yeah, you're I talking about. Yeah, I sent you that beret-looking Oakland A's hat. Are you kidding? What? Where is no, it? No, no, you got it. It's the gray one, Alex. Yeah, but it's not, yeah. It's not yeah. here. It's in the yeah. other room. It's in the other room. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, and, but I think I have a... Cow cow and uh, and somewhere, stuff. somewhere, I have an Oakland A's jacket. That was yeah. given to me by uh, Wally Haas. Uh, you know, I remember that the Oakland A's used to come into the Camel oh. Studios with food, and uh, and they gave you baseball and uh, a bunch of other stuff. But they there. no the Sharks. <laughs> but uh, and, and, you know, Billy Martin was uh, the manager at the time. Hmm. Hmm. Eighty-one. Yeah. 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 And then no uh, Sharks. Yeah, I remember. I remember one morning we used to have people come by. I always try to publicize something by coming by the radio station of the morning show. It was the Oakland A's? Yeah. One morning I looked down in the uh, in the uh, uh, what do you call it? The parking lot in front mm -hmm. of the radio station, and there's a giant, what looks to be like a mouse, standing there. Guy in a mouse costume, and. Uh, all of a sudden, next thing I know, there's this guy bringing this other guy with the mouse costume on into the studio. And I said, uh, well, what is this all about? And they say, well, uh, we're from Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater. And this is when they were first starting out. And he said, uh, I said, oh, well, and, and you have the mouse as your mascot? And they said, oh, no, that, that's Chuck E. Cheese. He's a rat. Yeah. <laughs> I said, you picked a rat as a mascot for a goddamn children's eating place? And they went, yeah, what's wrong with that? I said, oh, man. <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. You know, don't try to put these in the ghetto where rats are killing kids. You know, just started, stick, stick to Marin County where they're all the rich whites, you know. What's wrong with Marin County? County? Was he the guy that started uh, the Atari? Uh, uh, yes, he started Atari, and then when he was through with Atari, he started uh, uh, Chuck, e. Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater. I'm trying to remember his name now. It started with a B, I think. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, San Jose was the first one. Uh, uh, yeah. Us as parents yeah. call it Chuck E. Disease. <laughs> Chuck E. Disease? Yeah. Well, all those damn balls. Yeah. Well, you know, what, you know what? I used to love you. I, I, you've, have you been to a Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater? And they start. Yeah, we took them when we were kids. And they then we, start we playing, never went again. <laughs> they have all these animal heads on the walls. I mean, this yeah. is like really bizarre. And also yeah. the paws of like deer and stuff. And when they play the music, the paws go. Yeah. And I'm thinking, this it is the most bizarre, the scary, the sick, disemboweled animal thing I've ever seen in my life. It scares the shit out of the kids. And, and and they're still around, aren't they? I think there's still one yeah, here in Harlem. Around. There's one around the corner from my store. Yeah. There's one by me, just maybe five miles away. So Chuck yep. E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater, by my reckoning, started in about 1965 when I was, was working. Uh, no, no. Huh? It was much later than that. But no, it, no. 65 yeah, yeah. was when I went. When, when did I go to work at uh, K, KMEL? Probably 60. Uh, no. Oh, excuse 80, me. Oh, you're right. You're right. Right. Nine right. or eighty. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, my mind is like fucked. It was. Uh, yeah, it was eighty-one. Eighty-one. So it's been around since nineteen eighty-one. That's you. that's how many years? Over thirty-five yeah, I was, years. I, I was listening to you on radio. Of, of serving kids with, you know, animals without their paws. You know. <laughs> yep. Cardboard Wasn't there pizza. That huge building in San Jose with the huge glass cases and like twenty foot tall nutcrackers in it. Wasn't that the? I, I'm just. Yeah. A I'm just. I just, I, I just can't. I mean, I must. I guess I was wrong when I told them that you know you you're in trouble with a fucking rat as your mascot, and it was described to me as a rat. Yeah. I I said mouse. I figured eh, that's kind of cute. Micey cheese, right? The pizzas have cheese, therefore it's Chuck E. Cheese's pizza time. No, Chuck E. Cheese is a rat. Probably because they didn't want to 
conflict with Disney or something. <laughs> yeah, Mickey Rat. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, uh, Patrick. Kevin, you said it tastes like cardboard. I was always like just a goopy mess of grease. I would have taken cardboard over what we have here. Well, yeah, cardboard <laughs> grease. <laughs> I remember you get a bunch of tickets from the machines. You yeah. In the tokens. You did you get about 5,000 tickets to get a plastic spider. Right. Yeah. All, all I know <laughs> is that when I want to eat, I want to eat. Uh, they have these places. I've never been to them, but I can only imagine Dave and Buster's. Oh, yeah. In, yeah. in which you eat and then play games. And I'm going, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't really want to play games when pizza have got, people have got pizza juice all over their fingers and they're yeah. using these plungers and everything. Am I right, yeah. Patrick? Yeah, sure. That's, that's an adult Chuck E. Cheese sort of experience. Exactly, yeah. That's part and, of and, and we've got something here, and I don't know if they're anywhere else, but it, it's Firestone Pizza. And it's another, it's a, it's a, a hybrid of a Dave & Buster's and a Chuck E. Cheese because they've got both games that kid play mm -hmm. and then there's arcade that you see guys in our age group that maybe would have played pinball or whatever yeah so it's for the, the whole family literally yeah. and it yeah. i've been there a few times never been to a dave and busters and i never played anything for the exact reason you're talking about alex is because i'm not seven anymore and i do give a shit if somebody's got pizza grease all over something yeah i used but a Pier 39. Yeah, they get sloppy across, drunk. Which was across from the Camel parking lot. And there was a game there called Whack-A-Mole. Yeah, I remember Whack-A-Mole. <laughs> yeah, that it, was it, a Pier 39. Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the mole would come up and, and you'd whack them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. the stupidest game in the world, but I would still play it. Yeah. You know, yeah, I would go over yeah. there and, hey, you want to go and play some Whack-A-Mole? Sure. You know, boom. There was no purpose to it. There was no prize to win. There was no <laughs> score. <laughs> There was no score. You just Wait, simply I waited for a mole to come out of a hole, and you hit him with a with a with a uh, mallet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now that is a good game. <laughs> really, that's one that keeps you occupied. You know, there's there's exercise. Have you, have you seen? I want to get the a new video game. Do you see the new video game that's out? Oh, the top one where they kill, uh, they invade a school or something. You invade and a school and then shoot the kids. Yeah. <laughs> And on most of the kids, most of the kids in the game are women. Okay, and it's online. You don't you don't buy it. You go online and play it. Yeah, well, that's a way that they find out who's going to be at the next school what, shooter. What kind of politically correct society do we live in, where people are bothered by a simple game in which it's a gunman going into a school to shoot up the kids? I mean, who is who who is bothered by that? I think can you imagine? Jack can you imagine? Yeah. Every, everybody's calling everybody the show at the last minute. The last minute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Brian's uh, coming in. There's Brian. He's on, lying on his uh, divan, and uh, that's a Jack Bishop who does the show after us called The Intersection with Amy Manuel. So now I don't have to plug it. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for plugging it anyway. Well, it's the least I can do. Well, you know, when you're the uh, EEO hire, uh, <laughs> hey, you know, uh, know that you don't have kids, Alex, but as somebody who, uh, you know, has grandkids and even great-grandkids now, yeah. in deference to Chuck E. Cheese, oh, God. They're, they're inescapable. They're inescapable. You're, you're now defending. You're now defending Chuck E. Cheese. Next, he's going to defend Roseanne. Go ahead. Well, no, I'm not defending them. I'm just saying you, you get drug places by your kids and grandkids that you would not go on a dare on a bet on your life. Yep. But I, but I wanted to share one story. Uh, our granddaughter Kayla, who uh, is now almost 30 years old. Mm -hmm. loved Chuck E. Cheese as a little kid. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite memories on her seventh birthday, we took her to Chuck E. Cheese because she was having a Chuck E. Cheese birthday party. And all the kids, you know, all excited. And Chuck E. has... By the way, can you believe our show has come to this now? 
Go ahead. Yes. And if we have a lot of people watching this. this. Hear what mine comes to. <laughs> anyway, all these kids are, you know, they're excited about Chucky. And my dear, sweet little Kayla, right there in front of her grandpa and everybody, goes ahead and pops Chucky one right in the nuts. <laughs> Yeah. And she I, was I'm 30 broke. years old. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And and how did <laughs> Chucky react? Oh, well, Chucky whimpered like a Republican and folded over. Yeah, okay. <laughs> hey, pa Patrick, who is the Republican? Uh, oh, what do you know? At the last minute, because Ray Renati is calling. Oh, you uh, got a full house. We have a full house for the first time in a long time. A full house, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Why'd you call back, Ray? I am real quick. And uh, I, I thought I'd do the first uh, call from the throne. Oh, oh yeah, he, he's having a colonoscopy tomorrow, and let's just say he's vacating at a rather rapid rate. Yeah, wow. Wanted to make Gavin what history. did they give you to drink? Because I just use some very simple stuff. They uh, they let me use this stuff where it's a little bottle about that big, and you just chug it down, and then you you go like a bandit, and then the next morning when you wake up, you take it again, clear yourself out a little more, and you're on your way. Or, same thing. Huh? Same same thing. Oh really? I can't remember what it's called. It's a movie prep. A, a movie prep or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Except I, I do the. I, nuts during the week because I did I forgot and then so I had to go to go to Walgreens and buy an extra thing and and have that before the movie prep. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, great. All right. Your but house I, short lived. Well, we have we have we did have a full house, so yeah, that's, that, <laughs> I, that's good. So anyway, so you're on the throne. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I, that's uh, 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 yeah. It's it. It's not terrible. It's just, you know, you, you just have to go a lot. That's all. And but, I'm hungry. But then when it comes out just clear, you yeah. know you've cleaned yourself out. And then I went and I did my uh, colonoscopy. And when I woke up, the doctor said, by the way, congratulations. You really cleaned yourself out nicely. And I don't know why I was proud for weeks because of that, but I was, you know. Oh, I cleaned myself out completely. Well, now I'll start clogging it up with crap again. <laughs> you should go on another fast just for the hell of it. Uh, another well, fast? You, you can't uh, eat now. Yeah, he can't. He can't. You can't eat. No, uh, you can have. You can have broth. I think. Boy, yeah. there's nothing that satisfies hunger like broth. Broth and popsicles. Yeah. Yeah. I thought jello too was another thing you could have. Yeah, I'm gonna go make some jello. I'm gonna have to No, but you can't have you can't have red jello. You have oh, really? Be because then they can't see the polyps if you have red jello. Oh. oh. So you have to but, have uh, a, Yeah. Wh what? I made a remark earlier. I said something about the just so Phil knows, I wasn't referring to him specifically. This I don't know who I told this to. I think it was I don't, it was either Renee or it was you, Alex, or it might have been your wife. I can't remember uh, the the reason why I don't uh, Skype while driving anymore because of, uh, like I said, officer an oh, no, officer pig fucker who pulled me over on account of the fact that I was watching YouTube. This happened near Pittsburgh International Airport. Yeah. So, so that was not Officer well, Phil Meyer. Although I do insult Phil, but you know, not not in this context. Couldn't you, Brian? Couldn't you have told him it was a GPS that you were looking at? As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell the judge that it was a that it was a glitch or a virus that affected my phone, and that I had because all the other phones are off, and uh, that uh, it's it was causing uh, random videos and advertisements to pop up with it beyond my control. So as a countermeasure, I, and this uh, this is this is not entirely the truth. This is a stretch truth. I have downloaded an app called Black Me. It's free, free of charge. It's supported by ads. You can't even buy it if you want. I wish you could, so you could not have to worry about the ads. But it's called Black I Me. Mean, B L A C K space M E. It's I think me. that you it's actually. Market. I think that Hello, you. I, 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 I think that you were actually stopped by a cop named Officer Pigfucker is really ironic. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs>
<laughs> but hey. it gives you it gives you a little square on the on the, in the center of the phone. You tap on it, everything blacks out. You can still hear everything. Yeah, you can still hear your speakers if you have Bluetooth. But the screen is blacked yeah. out. So no hey, listen, you, you, you hear you hear that? That's a theme song. Uh, and uh, oh, I, I thought it was Ray. first of all, I want to thank Ray for calling us. He's calling us from the toilet. Mm-hmm. Where this oh, show you don't have on. to strain. Yeah, not with the yeah. stuff you took. You don't have to strain at all. You just sit there and let it just fall hey, out of you. Alex, this yeah. show <laughs> gone into the toilet? What? This show has show gone, gone into, into the toilet with Ray Renati, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. And Patrick Blazik, let ladies and gentlemen. Let it flow. Sitting in his little chair. Uh, Jeff uh, Stein. Thank you so much, Jeff. Brian, nice hearing from you tonight. <laughs> And dear little story earlier, Phil Meyer, thank you. Uh, Chris Ritter, thank you. Uh, uh, Max in, in Berlin, Germany, thank you so much. And of course, Kevin and them, what do you want to, you had your hand up, Ray. Oh, I was saying goodbye. Oh, you were just saying goodbye. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought you meant I, I just went again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, will you? So they can uh, see you going. All right. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizens panel for tonight. Uh, Jack and Amy are next with uh, the intersection. And then at the 1 o'clock this morning, it's connections. Tomorrow night, hopefully, if his Internet is working, uh, it will be the wonderful music of uh, Damien Chaplin and his orchestra uh, right here uh, at GabNet. And then at uh, 10 o'clock, I'll be back again. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime... If you see her, yeah, you know what to do. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye.